At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we are welcoming our guest, Courtney Marino, with us. And she is not only a health coach and uh, energy healer, facilitator, she's a yoga practitioner, and she's also the owner of Aligned and Enlightened. And she teaches actually yoga with us once a week. But uh, we're going to be talking about your overall health and well-being and also about listening to your gut and hearing a lot about Courtney's journey and what that exactly was for her and why it's so important for people to do. So Courtney, thank you. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. It's nice to have you too. And I want to apologize to anybody that's listening. If you hear Jack hammering in the background, (laughs) it is the street work that they're doing that seems to be eternal. It's like when construction happens, it just never ends. So bear with us. Uh, We tried to pause for a while to wait it out, but I think it's just going to be going and hopefully you can hear and everything's clear. So it's all good. So anyways, Courtney, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's hear a little bit about you. I mean, a lot of uh, your disciplines and, and what you, what you offer. I mean, Aligned and enlightened, that kind of speaks for itself, you know? Yeah. And, and, and being a yoga uh, practitioner, facilitator, as well as energy healer and health coach and stuff. So it's really like a lot of your focus is all about well-being. Right? Yes. But where did that start for you? Great question. And I think it's a lot like, I feel like a lot of people have an experience that really kind of flips their world upside down. And that's definitely what happened to me as well. But I think it really started after I had my son where I started to focus on what I was putting in my body, because I was nursing him, Mm -hmm. what I was putting on my body, what I was putting in his body and on his body. And that's really when I started to like look at ingredients and focus on giving him the healthiest things that I could find. Um, and so interesting in, that a lot of times people will have that when they're taking care of somebody, whether it's a, a child or a loved one or even sometimes a pet or something like they they become like over aware of like what they're giving and doing to another. And then they start suddenly realize, you know, well, how does this apply to me? What yeah, was I doing to me? You know? Exactly. Like, <laughs> I was thinking about that on the way over here because I was like, it's definitely like a self-love journey because I was... I was never unhealthy, but just realizing that I wanted to provide the best I could for him and in turn doing the same for myself. Mm -hmm. So finding that self-love for myself as well. Um, So that's where it kind of started. Mm -hmm. And then I had a very strange um, experience where... I started to feel like there was something stuck in my throat, like there was a bone stuck in my throat. And I started to go to a lot of doctors and nobody could figure out what was wrong with me. What everybody kept telling me was that it was just anxiety and I needed to go on anti-anxiety medication. This was like right after I had my son. Um, you could feel like, what was it, like something when you were like swallow or like? Yeah, literally it felt like I was choking on a chicken bone or something. And I thought I was like, did I like, like swallow, swallow a bone? <laughs> I'm like, I need an x-ray, like all this and, stuff. And did they give you an x-ray? Yeah. Oh, I have had <laughs> too much radiation okay. at this point. Um, yes. And I no, have had. I mean, some people think you're crazy at first, you know, and, and you well, have to like yeah. almost fight with doctors to get, you know, the, the test. We'll just amuse me and test me for this you know exactly. like just, just see you know like because I'm telling you right I've had yeah. so many people tell me how, how difficult it is where you know, people will dismiss or be like it's anxiety or it's this okay so you you were they were pushing the anxiety meds yes um and I did have to advocate for myself and fight for stuff because they did just think it was anxiety at first 
But not only did I feel like I had something stuck in my throat, but I was feeling like I was gonna collapse just like randomly. And I felt like I was gonna die is what it really came down to. But I had all these really random symptoms. I got tested for everything under the sun, Lyme disease, every autoimmune condition you can think of. Um, everything came back negative always. Nobody ever saw anything, but I continued to search for an answer because I know my body pretty well. Mm -hmm. I've always been into fitness and like understand my body. So I knew there was something wrong. Um, and then I had a great doctor who eventually after a few surgeries, <laughs> he was like, you know what? I think that it might be this. Wait, 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 a little backtrack here. <laughs> After a few surgeries, yeah. probably <laughs> unnecessary surgeries, I'm guessing. <laughs> After like, okay, they can't find anything wrong with me. Let me just go under the knife a few times and then like. <laughs> I mean, I was desperate. No, honestly. I mean, I get it. But I mean, like, this is a, you know, I, I mean, there's a, a lot of beautiful, amazing doctors and nurses. And there's lots of education that, you know, is entailed. But you know, a lot of, you know, we're still trying to figure out this human system, you know, on an enter in and I think largely because they the a lot of people miss the components of how everything works together as an integral system, right? Mm -hmm. Your emotions and your emotional state directly ex affect your physical state and they're starting to get that. That's why like, oh, maybe it's anxiety, right? You yeah. know, and then, you know, but you have that, but you have also if there's suppression of different wounds or traumas, there's that. But then there's also, um, you know, like on, on the physical, like what's it, what's affecting? So you have your physical, you have your mental, you have your emotional, you have your, your gut, and then you have the, the energetic systems, right? Mm -hmm. And these all work together. And if one wheel is on clogged, but nobody knows anything about the energy or this or how this might, you know, yeah. affect this, everything else is off, yeah. right? And then it's like, it becomes a guessing game. Yep. Yeah. It was a guessing game. Oh, so yeah, I, yeah. So you, okay, so you have a couple <laughs> surgeries, and then there's one doctor after a couple surgeries and finally goes, okay, well, maybe it's, maybe it's this. So, and then he does the testing for a condition called Eagle Syndrome, which it turns out I did have. Eagle? Yeah. So it's when there's a bone back here, it's called your styloid process, and when it it's not supposed to grow, but there are random times where it just decides to grow. And they think it's from hitting your head, which I did do. I hit my head. So that, and that can press on your vagus nerve and disrupt your gut, every, basically throw your whole body off. So long story short, short we figured out what it was physically mm -hmm. that was ailing me, and I was able to take care of that. Wow. But so it's something like back here. So you were yeah. having a sensation yes. of this like choking on a bone because there was this, this a bone, a bone <laughs> yes. that was pressing on your throat. Yes. So it's a super rare condition. I had never heard of it. Most doctors and or dentists have never heard of it um, because I was going to the dentist. I was going to the doctors. I was doing everything. Anyway, once I got that, I also realized not only is there physical sensations and symptoms and all of that, but I do think it also had a lot to do with a relationship with, that I was in that was not serving me anymore. Um, and I'm sure that that had some physical manifestation as well. Yeah. Um, all, all of the parts, right? You yeah. Know? But I mean, that, I mean, that was something there you know yes yeah so anyway I figured it all out and then on that journey that was like a seven-year journey <laughs> oh, geez. I can't even imagine well I mean I can kind of actually imagine when I was a kid they were like that I mean they still I mean I don't think they still figured out what was wrong with me but like I was super sick as a kid oh really and so they they were testing me for everything you know yeah. like so I get going through the process, right? Yeah. You know, like, oh, another test, another thing. Let's figure out what's wrong with you, right? But um, so, so you go through the seven-year journey, right? You, you in this, 
in this, you're developing awareness of how, what you're using, what products and stuff, because you're having a son that's growing up and you're being so aware of, of what you're doing and using on him that you're, you're, you're learning that, right? Yeah. And, and then where does that go? What, what happened after that seven years? Well, within that seven years, I started, since I wasn't able to get answers for such a long time, I started doing so much research and trying to find supplements that might help me feel better and uh, other healing modalities that might help me feel better, like acupuncture and uh, yoga and everything like that. So along that seven-year journey, although it was difficult, it definitely brought me to where I am today and I can only really be thankful for that. Um, so during, I don't really know like how, um, how it happened. It was kind of just like by chance, but um, on this healing journey, one day I was walking by a yoga studio and I've done yoga on and off for 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and I happened to start talking to somebody outside of the studio and she seemed really great. So I ended up going to that yoga studio, falling in love with yoga all over again. And I decided to, they had a teacher training coming up. So I decided to do that to find community because I, it was like right after COVID mm -hmm. or in the midst of COVID. And I felt like I was missing that. So that's what prompted me to do that. But it was aligned with everything else I had already been. Yeah, you were already so, doing all the research on yourself yeah. and that, that you're like, I might as well be doing some health coaching for people because I'm yeah. learning all these supplements <laughs> and other ways to deal with your health yeah. and go through and how everything interacts. And then you picked up uh, some energy healing along the way as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During my yoga training, we did... Um, a chakra workshop that I was very interested in. So I continued to learn about that and I got um, a certification in chakra therapy. And then I also got uh, Reiki certified as well. Um, I'm one and two Reiki certified. And it's just been an awesome journey. Um, and so where does the journey start of listening to your gut? So... <laughs> That comes from constantly being told that there's nothing wrong with me and hearing it not only from doctors, but people that I was surrounding myself with at the time that I was going through this and not having the support that I felt like I should have when I was going through such a hard time health wise. Um, and when somebody is constantly telling you that you're fine, nothing's wrong with you, the doctors can't find anything wrong with you, you're fine, it's all in your head, just coming back to your, your gut and really knowing, your, you know yourself the best. You've been with yourself the longest. You're going to be with yourself for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. And having outside people kind of telling you what, what is going on with you when you know that there's something more is just that's where the listening to your gut comes from just don't let other people influence what you know is really going on for you yeah absolutely yeah and so with that being said like you know it, it sounds like it was like this this ability of like you kind of went on this own uh like journey where you you started out like um, having having these syndromes, having situations, realizing that maybe there was a few a a aspects at play, mm -hmm. but you had to listen to yourself, learn to listen to you, and listen to what is your gut telling you, what do you know? Because I mean, like a lot of people just like okay, give up and be like okay, three tests in, how many tests in, a couple of surgeries, just tell me the same thing. Maybe I just need to listen. Yeah. But you didn't listen in seven years of not listening and being like, no, I know that there's something. Yeah. Maybe we haven't found it yet. You might not know what it is, but there's something. And you continue to allow yourself to listen. Yeah. And advocating for yourself. Because there were so many times doctors were like, we, there's nothing left to do. 
Like, mm -hmm. we don't know what it is. And just knowing that there is an answer, there has to be, and there's a way that you can heal. And even if it's not through like traditional medicine, there are other ways that you can heal. And that is part of my journey as well, just finding those other ways. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. And what are some of the things that were, you know, so you fell in love with yoga all over again, but like as, as a facilitator, as a, as a coach, as a healer, as, um, you know, just being able and leading people, like talk about when you've like, like kind of took that into your own healing practice to saying, I want to do this for others. Yeah. Um, I never thought that I was going to be a teacher when I did my yoga teacher training. I just did it because I wanted to immerse myself in it, learn more about it. Um, I hate public speaking. <laughs> Getting up in front of people is like one of my hugest fears, which I have since overcome because once I did graduate mm -hmm. from my yoga teacher training, I decided that I was going to give it a shot. So. I've been doing that, I've been teaching since March, so I don't even know how many months that is, but not too long, but I like love it. Yeah, and but I, you've been doing it on and off for 20 years, and, yes. it, and it's integrated with all the other things that you've been learning and doing, so. Yeah, and I just love helping people on their personal journeys, like holding space and... Um, not saying that I know everything, but maybe I have information that might be helpful to other people yeah. um, who are either going through a similar thing because there are so many people who can never get answers um, or just help them in their everyday life and reducing stress and just all of the benefits of yoga that I love to be able to show people. Yeah. So... You start, so you, you went to this yoga training, you allowed yourself to fall in love with yoga all over again, not going in there thinking that you're going to do anything and, and lead classes or, and then you, you end up starting to teach it. But then on top of it, you do work one-on-ones with people. Yeah, right? I do. Most of my stuff is done virtually, um, I, but I have done in-person stuff as well. Um, and that is all amazing too like I love again just helping people that's I think my passion in this life and if I can help somebody on their healing journey then I'm all about it I love it and when you you know what do you think is like is is next for you is there a new like desire or craving or something that you're like, okay, this is something that's interesting me or adding, adding more. Like, we're just like, you know, do you want to start doing more things uh, in person or running more groups or, do, you know, like where, where do you see like the next steps? Yeah. I mean, I am always open to whatever shows up. Um, I am potentially going to be doing my 300 hour teacher training. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I also would like to become a Reiki master. Um, and I might also do, uh, get into some sound healing as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah. And what would you tell anybody that was maybe in your shoes that has, you know, a lot of people, maybe people they love, people they respect, people that might be more authority figures, telling them that what they're, what they know internally isn't right, you know? What are some of the things that you could tell or give people as advice of how to help them trust or listen into their gut a little bit more and drown out that external noise? Yeah, I mean, it's just all about staying true to yourself. And um, is there like any like techniques or anything you did that helped you during those times? Like, you know, it's. I feel like I screamed into a pillow a lot. <laughs> oh, no, but these are good things. Okay. So, like, so one thing is to get out the frustration, right? yeah. because if that builds up inside, you know, that's not good. So, 
you know, scream into a pillow, get out the frustration. That was one of the things that you did. Yes. Is there a couple others that you can, you know? I mean, I just did as much research as I could because I knew that there were things I could do that maybe other people didn't know that could help me. Um, and so I just started to research what those things might be and started doing them. And I didn't, it's hard when people keep telling you like, no, 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 you're fine, you're fine, you're fine, and you're not. Um, but you kind of just have to, you have to turn that noise off and just be your own advocate. You have to stay strong. It's very hard to stay strong when you don't feel well, mm -hmm. but. So it's, it's taking those uh, initiatives and those steps to like make sure that you can be as strong as you can. So taking care of yourself a little bit more. Yeah. You know, screaming in the pillow if you have to. I'm <laughs> sure there was yoga classes or, yeah. you know, maybe in times like that, getting some assistance from somebody that can understand. Maybe like yeah. somebody like you that has been through that to say, hey, you know, like, let's just get you to continue to trust yourself. Yeah. Right? Lucky for me, my sister had been through a very similar situation. So like years before me. So OK, OK. So so camar yeah. camaraderie or like the yes. knowing of, you know, so yeah. So she was always like, you have to like advocate for yourself. And she was just very adamant about that because she had already gone through it and had to do basically the exact same thing. Wow. Yeah. So I think that that is so important because when you realize that you're not alone or that your story and so if somebody's listening to this and you're and you're feeling like, oh, wow, yeah, I mean, I've been told that it's crazy by my my lover or my family or the doctors or or people in my life or my col colleagues or whatever for whatever it is. Right. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's health related stuff. Sometimes it's about what your dreams or goals are, you know, like, oh, don't be so lofty or yeah. you, who do you think you are to want to do that or. You know, why would you want to quit this job and start doing, you know, coaching yeah. or what, you know, right? It's like people create these, these like, you know, dismissing this yeah. towards others and people like start, stop trusting them because the influence of others, especially people that we care about or people that quote unquote are supposed to be authorities. Yep. We are taught that we're supposed to listen to them. Yep. And then, but at the price of if you're taught to listen to them, you're not listening to yourself and you're the only one that knows your body. You're the only one that knows what's going to bring you joy. You're the only one that understands your, your potential. Yeah. You know, I mean, people can see it and people can help illuminate your potential, right? You know, so, so the, you know, it's helpful to sometimes have that push, but you know, you know if you have a dream and that it doesn't matter if you, you know, like whatever age, how old or, old or young that you have the capability of like starting anew, creating something, you know. And but when we ask for feedback, oftentimes we're dismissed. Yeah. And or so, like you're saying also, like people limit your ability, everything because they, they're, they're viewing it through their lens, not through your possibility. Yes. Right. And so even if that lens is a doctor and they've never heard of Eagle syndrome or they've never had somebody have whatever, then they're going to be like, well, that's my lens says this thing doesn't exist. If something existed, it would show up in this frontal scan. It didn't. But this was something in the back. Right. Mm -hmm. But then they scan the back. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's like, OK. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Ah. So really anchoring in. And then I love that you said, you know, you, you kind of got a little choked up, a little teary, too, about like how you're grateful of the transfer and of that. And, you know, I think that that's so important to highlight it because oftentimes we do go through many challenges in life. And and people that are listening, I know that our listeners have been through the ringers, some of them. Right. Yeah. And but in it, it's lessons, it's learning, it's evolution, it's growth, it's advancement. And if you can get to that point of seeing it as such, right? Yeah. Then then you get to that point of not having it control you, but having it elevate you. And yes. that's what it did for you. Yeah. It gave you these 
these searching through and just finding information led you to a different career to led you to, you know, teaching and expanding. And it's even going to go beyond. And that's one of the things I was asking where else you go. And it's, there's still that thirst of taking it to the next level in different areas. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, how do we know, like, yeah, does it mean that you wanted to go through seven years of, <laughs> of pain and struggle and feeling like you're crazy, but at the outcome of it, is the ability to transform so many people's lives in a, in a whole bucket of tools and knowledge and resources that now you have not only for yourself, for your family, but for those that you can serve. Yeah, That's exactly. Beautiful. It was a huge transformation. And I think that a lot of people go through that where it's a real struggle, either if it's like a physical manifestation or mental, whatever it is. But then they go through this really hard time and then have this amazing transformation in yeah. the end. And I always if you can hold that. on yeah. during that hard time, you will see it will always how be amazing beautiful. it will be. Yeah. I mean, it goes back to like nature. I mean, I think anything, right? If you, if you think of even like a plant, you know, especially like the really shelled seeds, like the plant has to break through, through that seed in order to grow, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The, you know, caterpillar goes through yeah. a metamorphosis in a cocoon and literally has to break through the cocoon in order to have this beautiful new transformation of these wings and life, right? Yeah. And, but I mean, like time and time again, you can see that in almost every example in nature. So why wouldn't it be true for us? And then what's the blessing? What's the beauty? What's that butterfly that is us waiting to be flown, you mm -hmm. know? But we have to go through those moments of darkness or like a lot of people in the healing world will say the dark night of the soul is yeah. like this ability to have this transformation and internal growth only to like step into who you truly are. Right. You know, mm -hmm. the hermit card and the tarot, you know, like it's all like, you know, and the tarot of uh, the tower card, you know, it's yeah. like it's part of the journey. It's not in there. It's like, oh, here's the tower. Here's death. But it's like in that the tower, or the, the death card, it's like that's utter transformation. That's not, you know, the, the crumbling down of the tower allows you to rebuild something instead of from the baseline of what used to be. Yeah. I mean, I'm renovating my place right now and like, it's like, okay, I just, maybe it's <laughs> easier to build a house from scratch because like, it's like every like beam is being replaced and it's yeah. like, you know, at a certain point you have to say, huh, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, like. I'm trying to work with the mechanisms of what somebody else designed for my place to try to make it more me, but it's not really working. Right. And oftentimes we do that for so long. We try to like maneuver and say like, oh, well, we're working with what was shaped for us by our parents or society or whatever. And we're trying to build within it. But sometimes it's okay for it to <laughs> and say, you know what? I just want to go over there and I want to design it, you yeah. know? I want to yeah. be the architect. Yeah. And we can be, which is the coolest thing. When we realize we have that potential. Yes. I love it. Courtney, if you wanted to leave everybody with something, what would you leave them with? Besides coming to your yoga class and maybe, <laughs> you know, we'll get all your information of how people can find you if they want to work with you when they're going through something, especially since you do things remote. A lot of people are from all over the U.S. and we have some international listeners as oh, well. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I would say if you're going through a hard time, stay strong, stay true to yourself, listen to your gut, don't give up, because you never know what kind of transformation you're going to go through, and it could be beautiful. I love that. And Courtney, where can people find you? Uh, my social media handle is at C money yoga C money we got M money working the camera equipment and C money over here um, and my website is aligned and enlightened dot com I love it and of course Friday mornings here <laughs> doing yoga if you want to join a yoga class in person and I'm sure that there'll be other classes that Courtney as we grow our yoga division and uh, wellness program that could fit but I thank you for thank being you. a part of our team and sharing your wisdom and helping encourage others that might have been uh, feeling like they're going a little crazy <laughs> yeah I to pleasure. learn to trust yourself a little bit more yeah 
Thank you. Thank you. Until next time, everybody, please like, comment, and subscribe. You know the drill. If you are listening to this, highly, highly recommend going and checking us out on YouTube so you can see us um, and help spread the love on YouTube uh, by liking, commenting, and subscribing because we need some help on our visual platform. And there's also an advantage to YouTube that isn't on the podcast, and that is you can grab the little shorts uh uh, clips that we do about four or five of them so the juiciest best part that if you want to share that with a family member or friend it's there for you so go and check it out thank you and until next time thanks for joining us if you enjoyed this conversation please like it subscribe and share it with your friends if you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free.